everyone <laughs> um i'm here today with monique and kayla and we're gonna be talking about their magazine uh so i don't know how to pronounce it and i think that's a good start <laughs> um does, do one of you want to tell me monique you can go with okay, that. okay so <laughs> so it's called atelier du soleil um when Kayla first came to me with the idea. We were like, well, we need a name. So um, we went through a couple of like vocab words and stuff of things that we wanted to portray, like like a studio or like a, a digital gallery kind of thing. And so, um, and we both like French style kind of like artistry and everything. So we were like, oh, that'd be cool to kind of just like do a spin on it and make it French words. And so Atelier du Soleil um, translates to Sun Studio. So yeah. Oh, why did you guys want Sun Studio? We liked, <laughs> we liked the, um, I guess the French word of soleil. Um, mm. They just all got, they don't just, they just all kind of flowed together. I think I told her about the the word atelier means like like a like a workshop studio basically, mm -hmm. and that's basically what we do and what we like portray and like get out there is like people's like workshop studio art. Um, and so I guess like through that, and then we just like, oh, to add the word soleil in it, it kind of like blends and it kind of works and Sun Studio because we're shining a spotlight on, yeah, on yeah. these people's work. So it's kind of like something like that. And it's funny how it kind of just like was even more fitting the more we started to like mm -hmm. do things for it, I feel like, because it just reminds me of like you and like our summers and like the beach. And then it just like. I don't know, incorporates itself into our feed and like what we were looking for, mm -hmm. like aesthetic wise. So yeah, it, it just worked out nicely. Flowed together. For yeah. Sure. yeah. I really like that. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of talked about how it reminds you of like spending the summers working on it. Uh, did you start this last year or this summer? So we actually started it like, what would you say, March? Literally right when quarantine yeah, hit. Yeah, like quarantine <laughs> hit. And it was something that I was like, you know, I really want to do this we had worked on a magazine like at Michigan State together and that's, that's kind of how met. we knew each other mm -hmm. okay um it was a fashion magazine so I didn't know if I wanted to do fashion still and I was like you know I know so many cool artists like I really want them to have a platform and then she was so on board with it mm -hmm. and we had such similar styles it was just like it kind of made sense mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> um, being in that like first magazine it was like you know it's nice I had like fashion lifestyle beauty all that kind of thing yeah um and I don't know, I guess yeah, at some point you kind of grow out of it and you're like, okay, it'd be really nice to, you know, I work for these people or like I'm a part of this club for other people, but yeah. it'd be great to create something of our own. And um, yeah, we just figured we have, we share so many similar like artistic styles and, mm -hmm. and art that we like and we share the same passion for wanting to support other artists and um everything like that so yeah it just kind of like worked out and yeah she came to me with the idea and I was like you know what I've literally been thinking this same thing that I want to <laughs> do something yeah. that involves my passions for art and for helping others and so it just kind of like worked out like that and she was like oh cool so that's it yeah <laughs> so we're gonna get started on this mm -hmm. and yeah. then the first issue came out in June we worked on it for a few months, just like figuring out um, like how to get submissions going, how to get people to submit, and then like working on the actual pages themselves. And then yeah, June was when it came out. And then our second one came out a couple weeks ago, like end of yeah. August. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. So are you trying to release a new like digital magazine every other month? We haven't really come up with a timeline for it yet, <laughs> just because it is hard to like factor in how many people are going to submit in like what amount of time. It is kind of like if you give people a deadline, they will meet it, but just like trying to get to a goal of like a good amount of artists to have that are like diverse in different mediums and just like different backgrounds, like we really wanted to do that as well. So it took some time. And I think like after this third one, we might have more of a rhythm, yeah. but it is just developing that right now. Yeah. So, the yeah. first two ones out were, you know, they were successful and I really mm -hmm. love them so much. It's just going to keep getting better. But those are kind of like a little bit of like test ones to kind of see like who who's paying attention to these. Yeah. Who, like, how is this going to work? Like, we're still kind of figuring out like the, I guess, like the s steps that we're setting in stone for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But um. But yeah, because like people now are uh, connecting with us and sending us their art, and we're like, they're like, when do you think this will be out? And we like, 
we have no idea. We'll just yeah. like keep you posted. <laughs> Please stay stay on hold for yeah. a minute. Um, because I mean, it, this did start as like you know like a hobby, but it's kind of becoming more of like a full time job at times. Mm-hmm. And we have our own separate lives. Like Kayla's school, um, and work, and I've work, and so it's just like trying to find that balance into incorporating it into our current lifestyle. Um, it's been so fun and it doesn't even feel like work, but, um, but yeah, so we're kind of just still trying to <laughs> work out those tweaks. Yeah. But you don't want to rush the creative process. Like exactly. yeah. you want to continue so to enjoy true. it. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't want to make people feel like they need to rush either to be in your magazine, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like you, you want all that to kind of flow naturally mm-hmm. and keep making it fun. Yeah, for yourself, exactly. Everyone for sure. involved. It's all very leisure. It's a happy place. Like yeah. no one needs to like be super stressed out about it mm-hmm. or anything like that so yeah 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 <laughs> Just that is really place. cool uh so do you both have full-time jobs right now too um I work part-time and then I'm a full-time student so it is like you know like 30 35 hours a week commitment wise just doing things <laughs> yeah. oh yeah mm-hmm. oh yeah big time mm-hmm. what are you studying uh creative advertising and graphic design oh that's yeah really so cool. it's a lot of digital media work which is it like plays hand in hand pretty well with the magazine and just um getting experience for that too great portfolio for sure oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) absolutely do you know what kind of creative work you want to be advertising um I don't know the longer I've been in advertising the more I realize it's it's a little messed up just because you kind of got to get in people's heads and like figure out what their deepest darkest fears are and like advertise to those in a way so I can't decide if I want to do advertising itself, but the courses, like the creative side of it all is super fun. And I definitely want to get into like creative or like digital media for a company or even like if someone I know starts a business, I'd love to support them or create an agency. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, what a big goal. Create yeah. an agency. That'd be so much fun. Yeah. yeah. that I feel like that'd be really good, especially right now with the pandemic, like mm-hmm. so many businesses are suffering and like if there could just be like some creative way to put them out there and make everyone like know mm-hmm. what they do. Yeah. Um, I think the world yeah. needs that right especially now. Especially ones mm-hmm. that don't know how to use technology to their advantage too. Like, yeah. Uh, someone's got to step in and teach them that eventually because everything's going to go digitally eventually yeah. so it's just crazy that's so true yeah, yeah i've absolutely. never thought of it that way <laughs> oh yeah you're you're vital to a lot of people absolutely yeah. your knowledge yeah. yeah i feel like there's a lot of psychology in that too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um what do people want what do they like what do they mm-hmm. don't like mm-hmm. yeah and whether it's like used right because it that reminds me of that like social dilemma yeah um documentary how about like like you know things can if the creators don't really like you know do the research and make it right then like it can become manipulative yeah in a way to the users and so it's just like that's you have great values so I know that's not gonna be the issue for you but that's something you want to like yeah like step away from I see that Mm -hmm. so maybe you can like get into it but like make it your own kind of thing so you can like change the the dynamic yeah yeah I know I totally agree and we'll get there when we get there I still got a little over a year but yeah. well that's yeah. exciting you're yeah. moving forward like before you're even like I don't know everyone stops like they graduate from college and they're like what do I do you're getting the ball rolling before you even graduate mm-hmm. like uh, that's really Kayla, cool. you are ahead of the game yeah, yeah. <laughs> well thank yeah. you <laughs> like, sometimes it doesn't feel like it but <laughs> oh no you're probably gonna get like opportunities that present themselves to you before you're even done with school mm-hmm. and like that that feels good oh that's so awesome yeah. especially during thank quarantine you. time to like tell people like the employers like oh this is what I did during you know certain super uncertain times <laughs> yeah yeah everyone's doing something creative quarantine. and connecting still yeah different <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> this wouldn't be here without it exactly. yeah yeah this podcast but yeah yeah, yeah. but you know so I know a lot of people who like kind of spent quarantine um like drinking and mm. maybe they got really into like a different social media but Mm -hmm. like they can like look back and go wow I actually wasted two months Mm -hmm. and I'm like oh man Mm -hmm. like that that would probably hurt yeah hurt to feel yeah or you guys did something like really productive and fun and exciting and you're like I have all this free time let's do something yeah no it it definitely got me through quarantine like for sure just the like our meetings on zoom and then Mm -hmm. like figuring out what to do for the instagram or just like the layouts and then like we became like much closer friends through that and it just all like made the pandemic not feel so like isolating Mm -hmm. and like i don't know like what you said i didn't really get into super unhealthy like 
habits because I had this to fall back on and like you to talk to and it was really valuable yeah oh yeah absolutely and connecting with like people I probably would have never met yeah these two like online so it's just like that connection was crazy and yeah like I don't know what I'd do if I didn't have Kayla (laughs) every day to like help me through it so yeah yeah so like you're actually making more friends Mm -hmm. when everyone else is like feeling like socially distant and isolated you guys were meeting Mm -hmm. people and creating relationships yeah absolutely and it's funny because it made the world feel smaller like Mm -hmm. how everyone was connected like I just knew a friend of a friend who, you know, introduced us to M at Gathering, and it was like we met her and we met her friends, and we just like started to meet all these people who knew one another and who had like met in the past, and it was like, oh my gosh, like this community like is so accessible. Like, yeah. You can meet, you know, so many different people who know so many different people that you also know, yeah. and um, just through like making this zine, you know, and connecting with the artists that we connected with even just in our first two issues it's Mm -hmm. like you start to see how everything kind of weaves itself together and how everyone like wants to be in the that community and it's an amazing thing yeah it's really so great yeah different spots of Michigan too like because like we I don't know I've never traveled so much in my life (laughs) during this because it just like drives to Grand Rapids drives to Lansing drives to you know back and forth to Detroit everything like that so it's just like I've never seen so much of Michigan too mm-hmm. and and of the great creative people that inhabit it too. It's just like yeah, it just it did make it feel like a smaller community but also very hopeful and like hungry for like more people to join. Yeah. It's just exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. And like what about you two? Do you two feel like you're unleashing more of a creative side like within yourselves too working with all these different creative people? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's constantly inspirational for us too to yeah. like see our inbox just we would always say that we would go on zoom and just be like look how many cool people are in our inbox right now mm. it's just like it's so refreshing and inspiring and like I said like hopeful for the future too that there are so many people like that out there um I don't know that you would never you have never known yeah if you just hadn't you know searched or called out like we need submissions and stuff like that so so yeah it yeah. definitely has <laughs> yeah or even just like curating like our Instagram feed and coming up with like mm-hmm. how we wanted to you know frame everything or just yeah. like the, our base like ideas for finding fonts and finding colors yeah. that worked and like designing the layouts I never like we have a shared Pinterest board that yeah. we like come up with for different layout ideas and like fonts and just different things and it's like you know looking through those when you go to design the magazine is like oh my gosh I'm so inspired and I just like there's so many different things you want to do with it so Mm -hmm. it's definitely like I don't know created much more of a drive to like design and create and you know get that like not done but do it well and have a fun time with it absolutely because these artists are uh, so talented and so we want to do our best to portray them in the best way possible oh yeah so yeah just like using our creative abilities to shine the light on what they do and what they have aspired to want to be and everything and so um and definitely just like our little aesthetic that we've created is like literally a baby between the two of us of like what our like artistic styles are like together so it's very portrayed of like our styles as well which Mm. was like a fun kind of you know like people would be like oh will you guys submit your own art and we're like ah it's not really like that what that's about but like the magazine style itself is like portrait of like our yeah, creative work yeah. as well it's like our little dream world yeah <laughs> of, it is a dream world for of sure. art and <laughs> yeah. cool people <laughs> that is so cool so how did like you start the magazine like were you reaching out to people initially and now people are reaching out to you guys or do you still kind of get to explore and discover like kind of more curated who you want yeah. in it yeah yeah so it started off like I know we did reach out to quite a few of the people that were in our issue one and it was a lot yeah. of our like friends or just like mutual friends of friends who um, did art uh, and we did get a few just random submissions I think from people mm-hmm. um, which was super awesome yeah. and then as our second issue came we did get more submissions from people that we didn't know and we reached out to a couple artists as well 
to kind of curate that, which was really awesome. We had this whole like Google Sheets of yeah. like lists of artists that we've like followed over the years or like recently that we were like, well, I want to like reach out to them and have them be in our magazine so bad. So yeah. that's also an ongoing list. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. And like, like, like having Lily too, like mm-hmm. she had what she has like 20,000 followers she or something like, like that. She has like 56. 50? Yeah. Something like followers. that. So that was a huge like just <laughs> honor to like have her even like look at our email. Yeah. Because we were like, I, we don't know what you're doing in life, but it seems like you're a very busy, important person. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, and she was just the kindest, like, sweet person. And she was just like, she was equally as honored, which I was like, whoa, like we just started. So yeah. Like, but um, but yeah, that was just that was so cool to like be able to see ourselves as a platform that artists like her still think it's like beneficial for them to like get their art out there and like want to support us as we're supporting them. And it's yeah. just like so cool. Definitely. Yeah, it was fun to like curate, like have a mix of like curating with artists that, you know, we've admired for so long. And then also like have people that we've never met that are like, you know, a little smaller contact and reach out to us and they have amazing work. And you're like, whoa, like I never knew you before this. Like yeah. there are so many relationships like that we build just through having people reach out to us. For sure. And even like for issue three already, we have like, is it like, three or four people that like are already lined up that submitted work without us even having to reach out yeah. um and so that's like a super amazing thing like we didn't even make submissions public yet but we already have people that want to connect with us and that like m- means a lot for yeah. sure yeah that's really exciting then you always kind of like can look forward but still be present enough to like take the work you have and then revisit it and put it into the magazine and then Mm -hmm. move forward so let's talk about the work like what kind of work are you guys looking for for your magazine it's definitely a variety um we don't have any restrictions of like skill level or types of art that you do like we would love to implement eventually like music artists and like what they do we're not sure how to do that yet um but it's it's a digital magazine so i can see how like you know it could work we just haven't talked about it or like planned on implementing it yet but um we are open to that for the future for sure uh so like we have feature like poetry um photography um different mediums of like you know like pencil drawings and like graphite and painting and everything like that and so it's a lot of different things (laughs) so we're definitely open to literally anything any anything creative that you do any like graphic design work that you can do or um writings it doesn't even have to be poetry it can be short short stories anything like that but um if you come to us with it we can probably figure out a way to fit you in there because we just want to get that out there because like there's an infinite amount of creative people that just express themselves in such unique ways that we want to include mm-hmm. all those people. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll figure it out yeah, as we go that along. That is so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, we mm-hmm. like, we aren't picky at all. We mm-hmm. love to, it's just, it's so cool because there are so many different mediums of art that like I didn't even know, didn't even know existed. And like, mm-hmm. like a couple of people submitted like, visual poetry where it was like you know these cool vintage ads with like poems on them basically and I had never seen that before in my life Mm -hmm. and it was like now we have two artists who have submitted that kind of work so I think keeping it like really open and um I guess like up to the artist to determine what medium they want to submit to us is really Mm -hmm. cool and it allows us to see different Um, forms of art and like really appreciate them as well something I'd love to include specifically is like textiles oh yes like with that girl that we saw in Detroit and she just had like amazing super light feminine like dresses that she seemed like designed herself and like put together herself and I would love to get more of those um just like expressions of art yeah of like through textiles and clothes that like designers do and maybe sometime we can like and they can submit their own photos that they've taken in them or like we can set up some kind of photo shoot here Mm. of like of like a studio photo shoot of people's textile like work that they've done like would be so cool yeah or even like typography I would love to have like a cool person that like makes different fonts (gasps) and like have them featured I would love that that so much or even like graffiti artists like if they can photograph their work in a certain way like Mm -hmm. that would be so awesome to have 
or like videographers or we can make that mm-hmm. work digitally like for sure th- it, the list is kind of endless like there's so many cool mediums that I would love to have featured but when you get to know like all the different people who can do those types of creative work you really are like even if you don't realize it or not, you're becoming like an agency because you're you're learning all these different people who mm-hmm. do different things and you're connecting them and getting them together. And that that's just through, you know, your hobby that is your magazine. Yeah. That, that's so much fun. No, we've like even said like, this is kind of like our dream job. Oh, it's, it's like a dream job. It <laughs> like, doesn't even feel like work. No. And I just, I could do this forever. Yeah. <laughs> I swear. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, a literal. Not even literal close to making a profit true. yet, but. No. <laughs> we will. It's, it's Maybe though. get there one day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll see. But yeah, yeah. still yeah. the very beginning. <laughs> and like in in order to make profit, like have you guys thought about like marketing and advertising your magazine more? Yeah, we like, it's hard because right now it kind of feels so, in like, you know, it's newborn, like sort of infant mm-hmm. age. So we're just kind of doing it, like trying to get a feel for submissions and like even just the timeline of everything. So like advertising and marketing hasn't really like crossed our mind a ton Mm -hmm. because we definitely like do want to go to print someday oh absolutely and print and someone even came to us about like wanting to help us make merch and we're like whoa whoa, we're not there yet but (laughs) yeah (laughs) but we like your enthusiasm for sure like that's that's exciting but um but yeah maybe like sometime in the future but yeah like you said it's it's still a baby it's still infant so we're still kind of like seeing how people react when we do release issues like Mm -hmm. is this getting enough attention are people equally as interested in this as we are like kind of thing so we're still trying to figure out those reactions and like if that's something that we can do but yeah Mm -hmm. I mean that's a good idea honestly and then I mean once we become so busy and it becomes bigger like we may need to have specific like graphic designers like come in and stuff like that I don't know yeah I don't know it could get big or I mean like you might just need to be able to like pay yourselves so that you could make it like a job yeah. that's true um, <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd gotta be think of us for sure right. <laughs> that's true that's so true yeah but yeah because mm-hmm. yeah. i think about like what would it look like if you were able to like put all of your time and effort into it but keep it fun you know you don't yeah, want to feel absolutely. like oh this is my hobby that takes up my life but now i'm obsessed with getting it out there mm-hmm. and it's no mm-hmm. longer fun right. because i just wish that more people were looking at it yeah um so it's like how do you keep that balance of like i do this because i love it yeah um not because i want other people to see it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for sure yeah. gotta keep the priority straight yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. So true. And then what do you do for work? Or, like, are you still in school or? No, I graduated uh, this past May from MSU um, with a bachelor's in, do, in interior design. Um, currently unemployed, I did work for um, a couple residential firms, like in the beginning of college. And I just um, was working for a Herman Miller f- furniture dealership, if you're familiar with like Herman Miller furniture at all. But oh, I feel like I've heard of them. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's, they're, they're really, they have a really great history of like, of their furniture and everything. Like if I were to point out something, like you would be able to, you know, like okay. figure it out. But, um, but yeah, so I most re- recently worked for them in office uh, design. Um, but now I'm like kind of like actively looking and kind of curious about like the architecture studio kind of side would be interesting for interior designers to be a part of but um but yeah I put a lot of time into the magazine right now and and um just like kind of like refreshing like what I want to do and like it definitely gives you time to think this quarantine stuff oh yeah yeah I was gonna ask like are you still loving interior design as Mm -hmm. much oh you still are okay okay for sure yeah for sure I am and it's like and it's interesting that I'm like doing the magazine of like graphic design work and while like I'm doing like furniture and stuff like that because mm-hmm. they're, they're somewhat related in a way they're both creative and but um but yeah absolutely yeah I'm looking for a job and specifically in Detroit too would love to be like in a historic city like that yeah absolutely yeah. <laughs> that's really fun and then like what about hobbies like when you're not um I don't know when you're not looking for your job <laughs> but yeah. like no, what yeah. are you doing when you're not working on the magazine yeah and especially like when it's personal life right especially during covid stuff like picked up a lot of new hobbies that I've just like poured a lot of um passion into like um picked up a film camera and just like non-stop take film photos and I've become one of those people that just like is like stocked with film and 
it definitely takes a load on my bank account, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. I'm getting that unemployment money. So yeah, yeah, yeah good. Um, but yeah, so so yeah, I take a lot of film photos and getting into that kind of artwork. Um, and I've been reading a lot more and longboarding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Picked up that skill too. Um, you make good playlists. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Lots of new music in the in the likes for sure and. Yeah, it's just fun to, like, every once in a while pull yourself in the music. You're like, I'm not really doing anything right now, so I think I'm just going to, like, put all my time into music right now. Oh, just, yeah. yeah. I don't do any of my own or, like, play bass or anything like that, like Kayla, like, cool <laughs> stuff. But, um, but yeah, definitely making playlists is for sure a hobby, definitely. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we do through the magazine, too, is, like, some of our blogs, like, we definitely have similar music tastes mm-hmm. um, that we, like, are just our favorite people to just share music back and forth to. Yeah. Um, and so we're like, let's make like a summer playlist and then let's make a like a at home quarantine playlist and stuff like that. And so soon we'll probably have to make a fall playlist. Yeah, I know. We need to do that. So, you so yeah, that's new music. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's hard work. Gosh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, are you sharing those? Yeah. Yeah. Those okay. are on our blogs for sure. <laughs> okay. Those, um, if you go on our website and which is our like link in bio kind of mm-hmm. thing, um, those are posted as blogs on our website and you just like click the link and even on your phone too, I think it just, it'll just take you to Spotify. Yeah. Um, basically. And so, yeah. Yeah. And what about you? You just took up the bass. What other hobbies? Yeah. So I play or I'm practicing right now, not fully fully there yet but slowly slowly making my way um and then I also like to read I do have a little point and shoot camera um that I'll take film photos on I I love like because Monique like you did have a camera before we like became super close friends but like with your like little point and shoot I just love like I told her this the other day her eye and like her photos and everything have just like just watching her grow (laughs) from like where like she was when I met her and then like just seeing like that um hobby or that like sort of like obsession and um interest in it like grow into what she does and like how she shoots now like I'm inspired by her and like her page is so great and I was inspired it's so by amazing. you <laughs> yeah. that's literally because yeah because I sure I had it in my closet and then like I met people like Kayla and Ollie and M that like dedicate so much time to film and so I was just like yeah I'll pick it up it's fun yeah <laughs> and then yeah I mean yeah <laughs> so and now she rocks it yeah. now she owns it and she's just in her like own little lane of amazing photography work Aww. but I have too much time in my hands that's that's the secret <laughs> okay, but what is too much time like maybe you're finally getting to discover like what you love uh-huh. and like what it is that you want to do and you're like mixing all that together mm-hmm. into a potential career in that's future so like that's so true yeah that's why I like in my um, my personal website that I have for myself, like I send that out to employers too. And this one guy got back to me. He's like, "Wow, it looks like you have a lot of hobbies." And I'm like, "Yeah, I do." Because like you know, you never know who's gonna look at it and be like, "Oh, she can do this." Like mm-hmm. she and she can do that. Like stuff like that. And I feel like surrounding myself with people like Kayla and like all the people that we've met, like have multiple passions and hobbies that like you can't just put into one little book. Like you have to like spread it out and like have their own. Yeah. It's just endless. The things that creative minds can do. That's a typical interview question right there Mm -hmm. is how do you spend your time? Like when you're not working, I've been asked Mm -hmm. that during interviews for jobs. And I, when I'm a student, like that question gives me anxiety because my life is work and school and like hobbies I I don't really know I'm like I walk outside (laughs) yeah Um, walks but like you can like confidently say like oh I enjoy this 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 and this and like an employer sees that and they're like wow like we could really put you anywhere Mm -hmm. and you'd figure out your your spot your Mm -hmm. role and that that's good that's important yeah Yeah. it's cool you're doing that thanks Thanks. yeah (laughs) Yeah. And then like I props to you because like being in school right now and working and mm-hmm. doing all this like that is a lot. And I, I like do you think you're able to take care of yourself still? Yeah, I honestly like I think through quarantine and staying at home, it's helped a lot and just developing like a good schedule of, um, you know, setting hard like times where it's like, nope, I'm going to spend like one to two hours, even if it's just going to a walk like walking to the grocery store yeah um taking that time for myself not you know checking emails not doing homework just you know 
reconnecting with like what I need at the, in that moment, like whether it's cooking a good meal or taking a shower or really whatever, listening to music, making a playlist. You've shown me so much about like how nice it is to cook a good meal. Uh. Oh my God. When the first time that I <laughs> like spent the night at her place, she'd be like, wake up. She makes French toast for me. Like it's like brewed coffee and just like makes it perfect. <laughs> I'm not a coffee person. She turned me into a coffee person because her oh. coffee's so good. And I tried to recreate it the other day. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I missed <no>. you. <laughs> I was oh. like, I was kidding. I was here to make my coffee. But, um, but yeah, literally that's so true. Like during this time, it's just adding that extra morning routine yeah. to just like take care of like, you know, your meal that goes, you know, that takes care of yourself. And mm-hmm. it's just like the extra time is just so worth it. So, yeah. yeah. You definitely taught me that. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. Well, like <laughs> I remember we also like did like morning stretches one time oh, yeah. with like nice calming music. And I was oh, like, yes. I'm going to incorporate this into every morning now because mm-hmm. she was like, yeah, I like to just like do my stretches and listen to music. And I was like, that is the perfect way to start a day. Mm-hmm. I'm definitely doing that now. Yeah. I really so, like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think just like that's what's kept me like pretty sane and pretty like motivated. Sometimes I lose it every so often when work does get a little stressful. But like for the most part, I think just um, finding that like uh, balance of, you know, cutting off work and saying, you know what? No, like I need to take care of myself. I need to recharge. I need to, you know, look after my well-being. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, yeah. I think yeah. that's really good for anyone who's like working from home right now or mm. in school. Uh, I don't know if we're really taught how to do that. Yeah, so. well, it's so hard because especially just like I feel like now everyone's expecting you to have like extra free time to do more work and do more like homework. And it's like, oh, well, you're at home. You have nowhere to go. Like just do this thing or answer this email. And it's like, I don't want to be working till 8 p.m. every day. And, yeah. You know, be barely awake enough to like make myself dinner and then go to bed it's it's just like there's definitely a lot more expectation there but it's been good for me to set boundaries yeah yeah (laughs) but yeah that's really good Mm -hmm. if you guys had one takeaway from anyone watching this podcast what would you hope that it is one thing that I thought about was just like don't be afraid to reach out to other people that are maybe doing similar work as you or not or I don't know just like through this it just showed a lot about like entered me into this kind of creative community I was like wow no one is afraid at all to just Mm -hmm. like create and it's just the best supportive kind of I don't know community and just like really fun and (laughs) it's just I really entered into it for sure during like this whole COVID thing um, into that creative community and just like meeting people constantly that just like want to get to know you and like are super genuine and like want to learn from you and be inspired from you and like me with them. And so it's just like, don't be afraid to just like reach out to someone even over through Instagram and stuff like that. Like I always respond to people's like stories I, I probably never even met in person or I've never I haven't talked to in like two years or I, just, if I appreciate something I want to let them know it because mm-hmm. it's just you know people put that out there for people to see and let them know like oh like I'm, I'm kind of doing this thing right now and I'm like go you yeah I love it I yeah. love to see it so so yeah I just like really love connecting with through people like, yeah on that so. yeah and do you think that that's a creative community thing or like actually a human thing that we just mm-hmm. aren't really feeling comfortable to do naturally I think it's a human thing I I'm talked with this uh one guy about it when I was interviewing him for um an article that I was doing for a, a club at MSU and he was like oh I, I feel so weird doing that because like I don't want people to think I'm like looking at their stuff they're like they know that you're looking at their stuff yeah. like and they, they want you to that's they literally want why they put it out yeah. yeah so like if you like something why not just like tell someone that mm-hmm. you like you out of these people that you follow you acknowledge what they're putting out yeah. and that like you're supporting them from afar that what they're doing is like looks great and just like hope you're doing good like hope you're happy like doing mm-hmm. all that stuff so it's just like yeah I think that's definitely like a human thing that people for some reason feel uncomfortable doing and I feel like over online it is even easier because you know people are like hiding behind that screen kind of thing but like right just come out from it and just you know you don't ever know who can you know like be a good friend to you or like benefit you but also like 
someone who needs to hear that during the day, that like they're being acknowledged and what they're doing is, you know, appreciated. Yeah. Well, and I feel like even just from people like reaching out to us and saying like, I love your guys' magazine. Like mm-hmm. that's uh, such oh, amazing it means work. so much. Like you, it goes like that artist or that person, whether or not they create, if you reach out to them and just say like, hey, hope your week is going well. I like, really love this thing that you posted or really whatever. I feel like that really sticks with them and is kind of like a motivator to just keep going. Cause definitely like when people would reach out to us and just say like, I love what you guys are doing. It kind of lit that fire even more Yeah, because it's like, oh, like people are seeing this and people enjoy it. So I'm going to keep doing my thing. And like, mm-hmm. I'm going to keep, we're going to keep like doing this together because it's like, people are actually impacted by it Mm -hmm. yeah and And that goes back to the accountability thing that we were originally talking about it's like when people are telling you hey what you're doing is super fun it's super cool I really like it um then you feel accountable to keep putting it out because you're like oh people want to see it (laughs) you know we're doing something (laughs) good yeah Yeah, that is so true I've never thought of it that way yeah but no I totally agree like just those little words of affirmation or just like people seeing it like does it doesn't necessarily have to be like I don't know a compliment it can just be like this I guess this is cool is kind of a compliment but (laughs) just like acknowledging it Mm -hmm. like liking a photo or just like responding to someone being like hope your day is going well yeah Mm -hmm. it it goes it goes such a far like long way in terms Mm of boosting that motivation my mom always said like a smile can go a really long way you Mm. never know like what difference it's gonna make Mm. but with social media like a double tap can go a long way yeah (laughs) yeah it really has become its own culture how like cringy it is sometimes it's just like that's you know some people like really count on that so yeah Mm. yeah. and that's like the most powerful way we can communicate especially during a time like this right right like right now we're we're covering our faces we kind of almost can't smile yeah, yeah. so like I try, to, I try to like <laughs> I smile as much as I can so people mm-hmm. can like see they're like hi yeah <laughs> but yeah. try but it's, it's yeah. <laughs> yeah do you do you know if you have any takeaway <sighs> yeah I've been thinking about it um geez it's like tough because there's so many things I want to say but I like don't know how to narrow it down into one little thing yeah I guess kind of like similar to what Monique was saying, just like the world is literally at your fingertips. Like there's so much you can do. Like the possibilities are literally endless. Like I would have never as of this time last year thought that I was going to be making a magazine with like one of my now, you know, closest best friends and like be so enveloped in film and and creative work and Mm -hmm. art. But it's like taking that step and doing those things for yourself that you like always have in the back of your mind, Mm -hmm. like actually just diving into it is so important. And um, it's terrifying. It's kind of scary. And it's like you have to think of, you know, logistics and stuff. But it's like at the end of the day, if there's something you know, out there in the world that you want to go and do and start and create, like, it's so important to just mm-hmm. go for it. There's no boundaries yeah. at yeah. all. Just like, yeah, just go for it. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Especially right now, I feel like um, with like the way the world is, it's so important to kind of just like be heard and start doing things, you know, for yourself, like for your well-being mm-hmm. and not necessarily like, I don't know going through the motions every day because that can just kind of make it seem like a drag and make make life a lot harder so I think even like in quarantine like I said like having that project Mm -hmm. really like got me through what could have been a really tough time yeah yeah I love it. I think that's the best advice you can give is like, do that thing you want to do yeah. um, and and do it with everything you got. Like, why not? Why not just go all in? Mm-hmm. It's cool. I, I don't know if we're taught how to do that, but I think we're learning how. Yeah. yeah I slowly, think we're learning. Yeah. That's exactly slowly what you should with this too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, completely. Like, you know, the pandemic hit mm-hmm. and Mammoth was, you know, a, a big photo booth event business mm-hmm. and there were no more events. So Bill was just thinking about it and he's like hey you know why don't we do video podcasting like that's really fun that's super great way to get people connecting Mm -hmm. um it can be smaller crews so we're still being like mindful of the the pandemic Mm -hmm. and doing our share of like not spreading it and uh 
it's been really fun. It's been really good. And with the, so the good. more into it you go, like the more exciting it gets. It's just, yeah, it's just so exciting. And even like, yeah, like we said, like a time during this, it's so important to surround yourself with people and yeah. just like with like new people that share the same passions as you and like not maybe not like sometimes physically surround but like it's just mm -hmm. it's super important yeah. during this time so any creative way that you can make that happen like go for it yeah and like there are people who are working together right now they're doing zoom calls and they're like it's just not the same mm -hmm. but it, even then like i've heard the exact opposite people who are on zoom calls and they're super fun and they're really exciting and it's it's not about like what you're doing it's about who you're doing it with yeah mm -hmm. absolutely i totally agree like even we um have like artist zoom meetups like mm -hmm. at, b right before we release the magazine we like meet the artists face to face <laughs> through zoom and um show them like their little spread in the magazine basically and just get their feedback on it and even just like that like i would love to have everyone like you know in one gallery and just like so have everyone much. like meet each other and that's like kind of our you know long-term sort of yeah. dream with it yeah but even right now just like having Monique there and then like the artists that we're featuring and just like getting to know their story and like how like seeing their reaction when they see their pages is like uh it's mm -hmm. just so fulfilling and so like fills you up inside and makes your heart yeah. all warm <laughs> I feel like your magazine is like filled with sunshine Aww. like <laughs> just like warm like love Aww. and connection cool. <laughs> yeah I'm like so it, it's got the name sun because it's like filled with a lot a lot of sunshine the world That's needs so good so yeah. Sweet. yeah well I'm excited thank you guys for coming yeah oh, thank yeah, you for having yeah. us this yeah. is really like an amazing experience yeah, yeah. absolutely so, did not think we would be doing something like this no, like a year ago <laughs> yeah for sure this is our first like oh my, I mean as you can see when we walked in we're just like whoa like yeah. starstruck a little bit <laughs> yeah like just seeing like, these mics I'm like oh my gosh I feel so like sophisticated <laughs> and professional yeah. this is so adult guys yeah, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. I'm talking on a podcast. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah. And it was, like, similar to the accountability thing. I've had friends say, like, mm -hmm. that's so cool that you stuck with the magazine, like, through school and everything. And I just respond. I'm like, I definitely would not still be doing this if Monique wasn't right there with me because I would definitely just be putting it off and putting it off and putting it off until, like, mm -hmm. I had a lighter workload. And then eventually just forgetting about it yeah but she like pushes me you know we like send texts to each other every so often of like instagram post today or like we should probably start working on this and mm -hmm. it's like really good to have that yeah for sure super important yeah, yeah. all oh, right yeah. and then how do you spell your um your the handle for your username on instagram for your magazine right. so the instagram <laughs> <laughs> it's studio dot do dot soleil okay yeah and That's what it is. How do you spell du soleil? Du. <laughs> so studio dot du dot s o l e i l. Okay. So sun in French, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thank awesome. you so much. Yeah. Now we can take them off. Take these off. Yay. Enjoy the real world. Oh, it literally feels so different.